He ain't mine. What? <laughs> that turn's coming down right back. He ain't mine. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, bro. <laughs> that ain't what she said. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my Twisted Life of Poetry. I am Poetry, and you are here for a Queen Sugar recap review. I am two weeks behind. Um, most of y'all know that I was out on vacation. In addition, when I, um, my aunt fell ill, went in for a surgery, and ended up on life support. She still is currently, uh, her condition hasn't changed. They're still just doing different things to her each day. With the exception of when I was at the hospital the other day, she started moving. And at first they thought that it was like an involuntary twitching because her face was grimace. But her she was like shrugging her shoulders like she was trying to stretch and all that, her legs and everything. So, and the nurse was like, oh, I ain't never seen her do that before. So I'm thinking that's a good sign. But it's been almost a week that she has not came um, to. Um, they had her under sedation. I'll talk more about that um, on Travel and Talk Tuesday. Y'all can get updated with me on this. Right now, let's get into this Queen Sugar recap review. This is episode 15, not the finale, 15, because like I said, I've been missing for two weeks. So I just want to get it started. Um, Basically, Ra, he laying up in the bed, broken, just broken, curled up in a fetal position. The tears, they, they, they heated. He, he all cried out, but the tear, but inside he's still well enough to feel. So, Rod, uh, Wood comes in and says, Hey, bro, I don't know what's going on with you. He ain't, still ain't told him. He said, But whatever it is, you need to get it up off your chest. That's the only way you're going to feel better. Uh, Rod turned around and looked at him. He was, Wood's like, What's going on, man? Is it work? Is it the farm? Is it the new and I have a fight? What's going on? So, Rod got up and turned to him and said, Hey, Call everybody. Call on Vi, Nova, Charlie. Get them all over here right now. I can't bear to say this more than one time. So, we'll say, all right, dog, I got you. He leave out. Then, uh, the Boudreaux boy comes over, over to the meal. And Charlie and Rennie boss up like, what the heck you doing stepping up in this joint, right? So, he's like, well, I only want to talk to Charlie. First, Remy tried to get a little tough, like, well, I ain't going nowhere. And Charlie like, Anything you got to say to me, you say in front of him. Boudreaux like, I said what I said. I only want to talk to Charlie. So, um, after a while, Remy was like, that's all right, Charlie. That's all right. Go ahead and have a conversation with him. He tried to walk past him and look at him all tough, looked him up and down. Boudreaux was like, boy, you better go somewhere. Ain't nobody tripping off you. you. You like small potatoes to me, son. Go on. Keep it moving. My lips, y'all know my lips be super dry when I be doing these videos. And I lost my little Magnificent Hydrate Balm. Oh, it's in my purse. It's in my purse. I haven't seen it since we went on a vacation. Okay, so anyway. Boudreaux claimed he coming in good faith. He's like, you know what? Girl, I ain't never seen nobody maneuver like you do. Really is turning me on. That's really what I'm saying to you. <laughs> He's like, you already poached 40% of my clientele. And um, I think that me and you could do this together. We would be a powerful force if we join forces. I was like, if you don't get the hell out of here with that BS, I ain't gonna join forces with you at all. And thank goodness Charlie said the same thing. She's like, look her. <laughs> if you don't raise the hiccup out of my office, because not only have I, I've, I've done more than 40%, I've taken 50% of your clientele and it's still climbing. Bet that, you know what I'm saying? He said, all right, you, you don't want to get in bed with me? She's like, no. Lay down with fleas, you know, lay down with dogs, you wake up with fleas. I'm not gonna do it. Mm -mm, ain't gonna have me scratching all up in the joint. He's like, I'm going to give you one more chance. You don't get in bed with me or not. She was like, step. Okay, so Boudreaux walked up out of that office, and she walks out and see Remy sitting there. He's like, okay, so what's up with that? She says, I don't even know. Like, usually she could try to figure out this angle. Usually Charlie is like, she may not be one step ahead, but she can catch up to him real quick. This time she's like, I don't know what the heck that was about. So Prosper shows up to uh, the farm. And he's handing off Doyle some things. And he's like, he'll be back in the morning. Harvest time is here. He really excited. And Doyle's like, I don't really know what to tell this man. Because he's like, yeah, tell Rod this, tell Rod that. Blue was in the house playing with his little toys. As far as I know, he still has not questioned where his daddy at. I think it's only been two days. Her parents must be gone now because we didn't see them at all. And um, 
She looked like she's still trying to figure if she could see Rod in Blue's features. That's how she was looking at him like, is this his son? Is this his son? Um, everybody over at Aunt Vi's waiting on the news. Charlie like, okay, you done got cold feet about this wedding. I understand. Everybody get cold feet. Rod's like, nah, it ain't gonna be no wedding. Vi rolls up like, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait. Come on, baby. You come on here. You sit down for a minute. He's like, no, I, I can't sit down. I just need to stay and I need to be upright for a moment. And he tell him like, the wedding is off. Baby. And they was like, well, what is it? What's going on? Because I'm back still standing to him. He's like, what's going on? He's saying, he's blue. Oh, child, when he see his blue, everybody like, is he okay? He upright? I'm about to jump up. I told you that woman was going to do something to him. What'd she do to him? Deferring the daughter, right? Y'all know Dola in her old crackhead days might be coming back to play. And I'm about has been playing nice. I'm about been playing nice. She wanted to like, make good with the family, but she really was looking at daughter like, I got my eye on you, honey bunny. Mm -hmm. So he said, uh, <sighs> he ain't mad. <laughs> what? The, the turn's coming down right back. He ain't mad. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, bro. <laughs> that ain't what she said. She said she not sure if he is. But I understand what you heard. I understand how that translated to your ears. Like somebody tell you that you ain't sure if you the baby daddy. Your first thought is, oh, he ain't mine. Mm -mm, he ain't mine. And for the pain and agony that swept through that family in that moment. Even Wood broke down. Wood was back there like. Because that was a point in life where Wood and Vi took Blue in. Because remember, Vi was his guardian when... He, remember, he found um, Darla out there strung out with her little trick, all doped out, nodded off, got piss and urine all over him, and the baby laying underneath her or laying on top of one or two of wood, took him up and cradled him and took him home. And that's how I, I got him. And, whew, I mean, I wasn't even supposed to be crying, y'all, but tears was like, my thug tears was coming down. My thug tears was coming on down. And must I say, Nova, look fucking fabulous. Oh my god. You know her body is already God sent. She's a dancer. She's a dancer before she started acting. She was in a really bad dance movie where she was coming to another area. She was like the Oreo type of girl and wanted to dance, but she was like more contemporary style and she had to get to the hip hop scene. It was a horrible movie. I always thought that she was a bad actress. Even on True Blood, I did not like her as an actress. But on Queen Sugar, she is doing a damn thing. I must say. I must say that. Anyway. The next day, they over at the High Yellow. They're getting food together, ready to feed the farmers because harvest is about to begin. And they all coming out. They help all the farmers coming out in the community to help with the harvest. Vi's like, look, we got to get through this. We're going to have to get through this. Wood is with Ra. That's the best thing for him, no matter. Uh, and no matter what. Blue was our baby. You ain't going to take that from us. That's our child. Ain't nothing changing about that. And like I mentioned before, or maybe I just talked about this to somebody else. Why has legal guardianship over Blue? First, I'm by had it. Remember, she signed it over to Ra. So even with this news that this baby may not be his, legally, Blue is his. Whether they prove the DNA test and said, this ain't your kid. Legally, it's still Rod's baby because of all the shit. He didn't ever sign nothing back over to Darla. So, I can't, I, I, I don't want to see this go down this way, but I can't wait to see how it go down. So, again, the farmers start coming in and help out with the harvest uh, and Rod and Wood walk in. Rod, I don't even know if you want to call that a walk. <sighs> He's like robotic in movement. He comes in and, um, the family looked at him like, boy, what you doing here? Like, he's like, I need to be here right now. You know, this is the first day of the harvest. Um, my daddy would be so proud. Yada, 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 this. He gave a speech, giving thanks for the harvest and for everybody coming out. And you could feel his pain through those words. I could feel it. I could feel his pain through his words. Because I was sitting in front of TV like, I've been mad at Rob for the past five, six, seven, eleven weeks. 
because of his little funky ass immature attitude. But in this moment, I just wanted to reach out and hold him. Rub his little freshly shaven head. His hair was freshly shaven. Just rub it, just to nurture him, just to try to ease his pain. So I was like, oh, little rap angel, little rap angel. Um, I got that look on her face like if this little girl, if I see that little girl, it's it's going down on sight. You know what I'm saying? But Darla told Wood that uh, Wood came by the house. And Darla told Wood that she was going off to her sponsors until Rob was ready to talk. And uh, she was like, you know, I never meant to hurt y'all. I never meant to uh, anybody to... Um, I never meant to cause anybody any pain. I only wanted... To be happy, I only wanted to be with Ralph Angel and have my family with him. And she said, "And it would nothing has changed." It basically saying that Blue is still his baby. Nothing has changed. <laughs> would say, "Girl, you ain't that stupid. You ain't that. You ain't that naive. You already know things change. You are not that stupid." So she tried to explain why she did it and 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 uh and why she had to say it now. Like I had to say it now. I didn't want to go into this marriage with the lie or with, you know, him not knowing the truth. And I'm thinking, girl, stop fucking lying. Mm -mm. Only reason why you said it because your daddy made you. You would walk down the aisle and kept it a secret. And Wood was like, why you did? Why you just didn't keep it secret? Why you didn't take that to the grave? <laughs> and uh, but yeah, her her daddy is the one that made her do that. So Charlie in the mail. You walk past the office and see Dawn sitting there. She look at her like, bitch, you got the gall to walk up in this motherfucker. Girl. So Dawn said, you know what, Charlie? Um, I understand things are a little crazy right now, but I just want you to know that I'm totally committed to my job. I, I'm going to be here for you. And Charlie said, no, 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 not on my watch. Mm -mm. <laughs> you think you could do what you did to my brother, to my family, lie to us day after day for seven years years and you think that you could just sit up in this joint like i got trust for you no baby the trust is gone mm -mm. i'm gonna give you two weeks severance pay but you gotta get the heck up out of here and you got an hour to do so i was like oh shoot. well okay now charlie she talked no no we're talking to uh charlie about how business is going i think they skyping or facetime or whatever y'all do on the computer y'all live chat and um why are they talking? She got a news alert about Queen Sugar having internal problems. And so she kind of rushed Charlie off the phone because, you know, it's hard today. It's, it, everything's supposed to be going good. Just based off the conversation, Charlie's looking good. So she tried to reach out to her contact, and the contact was like, oh, I don't, we don't know. We can't trace who the leak came from. Um, but I got to run the story. I can't sit on it because somebody else will. And Nova was like, wait a minute, let me do some first. This is no doubt the Landry's. This is no doubt the Landry's. And she was like, I just can't print that without you having something factual that the Landry's are behind us. So Micah is at school, and um, he's posting up flyers on the school lockers, right? And it's an open letter to the administration about how he feels about the display, um, the general and he getting kind of backlash from different students. Some students walk past and look at him like, that motherfucker there. And then other students walk past and say, you know what? That's what's up. That's that motherfucker right there. So, yeah, he kind of feeling the brunt of it a little from both sides. Um, Nova, she check in on our vibe and her health. And, of course, I'm back and you for the standard. No greeting. Yes, baby, I'm blessed. Highly favored, walking in righteousness and power to prosper. And Noah's like, look, don't give me that. We all blessed. Mm -mm, that's not what I want to hear. I want to know how you feel it, how you really feel. And um, basically, Nova seems to be feeling it all from all ends. She, she said she understands what lupus could do, how lupus could be, and although it's manageable, it's still a painful freaking disease to live with. I mean, even on, even with management, I, the management is basically to lessen the bad days, but it's, ooh, ooh. So I, I no, 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 we understand what's about to happen with our bad. I just don't want to see it happen. I don't want to see it. <laughs> That's where I'm really searching for chapstick or something. If I can see my dry ass lips on this camera. Hey, hold on.
I'm back, y'all. Cat knocked down a little pet gate, which made the dog run back and pee in the room. And last time he's back there, he pooped on the floor. So I had to get them together. Plus, I had to find something for my lips. Feel much better. Okay, so Nova talks to her editor. I forgot all about this dude. This is one of the, the new one who started working there, trying to push a counter story um, to deflect the attention off of Charlie, especially since the information that's being put out there is libelous. Um, and she's trying to write a story about how the Landrys are like bullying Charlie because that her being a, a black a black a business owner that's like hitting into their profits, or a female as well. And the editor's like, no. Mm -mm. That ain't where we gotta go. You the one that's trying to push for a different direction for this paper. Now that you got a story that's particular, particular to you, now you want to change back. Uh -uh, we ain't going that way. So, um, the, the Charlie is getting feedback at the same time from one of the farmers. Like, yeah, I heard y'all got problems at the mill. I can't trust my 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 cane or my product in y'all mill. And she's like, I don't know what's going on. Um, but there's other farmers that's around this ear hustler at the time. So I thought Nova should have told her what was up. She should have called and told her what was up a long time ago, especially like when she found out that the store. Matter of fact, when she was on the phone or FaceTiming with her, she should have called that up. Because another former is bringing it to Ra. And he's like, look, I'm sticking with my sister. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop being a punk. I'm not about to let these Landry's or these Boudreaux's punk me. That's not what I'm going to do. And you shouldn't either, dog. So, Michael gets called into the dean's office and tries to explain why the Confederate displays are there. She tells Michael, they're going to get removed. Um, she totally agreed with what he's saying. Um, they're going to move all the Confederate stuff. But, because he posted all those flyers up on the lockers without the school's permission the school board is saying that he is vandalizing the school so he's going to get a 30 day suspension for posting a flyer flyers that can be easily snatched down it's not going to cost you any money to fix the issue maybe a little time but 30 days who put somebody out of school for a whole fucking month and ain't no hands being thrown. That didn't make no sense to me. But anyway, okay, here we go. So, Ra, he's trying to reach Charlie and Remy, and he ain't able to get through. So now he's starting to get weary because he got his cane sitting there. It's already been harvested, and it's just sitting there. He could go bad. Um, but he knows something ain't on the up and up. So, proper ask Ra, uh, well, what the heck did Darla say? Is Charlie in the office? What's going on? Um, they got a truck full of cane. Ain't nobody picking up. Charlie and Remy, what they're doing now is having that conversation with Nova. That's why they're not picking up. And they're talking about the news article. And Charlie knows, like, um, I, could, I can get out in front of this story myself, but this is only the beginning. When you fix this, they're going to do something else. Then fix that, they're going to do something else. And it's going to keep coming. It's going to keep coming. And Remy look at her and tell her, look, hey, you need to fight. Now, this ain't that Charlie I know. You and your sister have always been fighters. And Nova look up like the fact that he acknowledged her, I was tripping off the fact that he acknowledged her too. But anyway, he said, you need to fight against them. And Charlie said, you know what? This is what I need you to do. I need you to go talk to the rest of the farmers. Make sure that they stay on board. And Remy's like, I got you. Whatever you need. She said, and she gets up and still walking out. And uh, they're like, well, where the heck are you going? She said, oh, I'm going to go to the source. She's going to go talk to Landry and the Boudreaux. You're probably going to go to Landry. No, she might go to the Boudreaux because that's the one that came into her office. But she's going to go talk to them. I hope that she is not going to try to get in the bed with them and uh, to make this go away. Please don't do that, y'all. In the end, Nova make it known that uh, I'm by, that she gonna be taking care of her. And um, Ra, he go lay down. First he go stand in Blue's room and he just looking, just looking and just. <sighs> mm. He go lay down in Blue bed. Um, shit. Like say, I'm vibing and start going through some rough days, and right in his rough days, shit, talk, Charlie. Do they ever have any good days? I mean, it's just been day after day after day, back to back, of just sadness in this family. They happy moments only last thirty minutes, and then some other craziness. This 
Is it because I'm disconnected from my family that I don't see this every day crazy? And they be having some serious stuff going on, too. I mean, my goodness. Oh, y'all. Thank y'all for being patient with me. This is the Queen Sugar episode 15, Copper Sun. Um, the finale episode will be posted later today. Stay tuned for it. Thank y'all for coming back. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Retweet the videos, post them on Google Plus, share them on Instagram. You can't share them on Instagram. I'm on Instagram now, y'all. Um, but invite your friends. If you know their friends that watch uh, YouTube recaps and reviews, send them over my way. You know, thank you for the love. Peace.